Hello everyone. Our topic for today is entitled A Life of Prayer. But first, let me read to you 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and the verses are 16 to 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Our Lord told the parable of the widow and the unjust judge to teach us that men ought to pray without ceasing. The widow persevered in seeking one definite thing. The parable appears to refer to persevering in prayer for some special blessings. When God delays or appears to refuse. The epistles which speak of continuing in prayer, watching for the answer, and praying always in the spirit, appear to refer to something different the whole life being one of a prayer. As the soul longs for the manifestation of God's glory to us, in us, through us, and around us, the inmost life of the soul is continually rising upward in dependence, faith, longing desire, and trustful expectation. What is needed to live such a life of prayer? The first thing is undoubtedly an entire sacrifice of one's life to God's kingdom and glory. If you try to pray without ceasing because you want to be very pious and good, you will never succeed. Yielding ourselves to leave for God and His honor enlarges the heart and teaches us to regard everything in the light of God and His will. We instinctively recognize in everything around us the need for God's help and blessing, and an opportunity for His being glorified. Everything is weighed and tested by the one thing that fills the heart, the glory of God. The soul has learned that only what is of God can really glorify Him. Through the heart and soul, the whole life becomes a looking up, a crying from the inmost heart, for God to prove His power and love, and reveal His glory. The believer awakes to the consciousness that he is one of the watchmen on Zion's walls, whose call really does touch and move the king in heaven to do what would otherwise not be done. He understands how real Paul's exhortation was, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit for all the saints and for me, and continue in prayer, with all praying also for us. To forget oneself to live for God and his kingdom among men is the way to learn to pray without ceasing. One leading preacher once said, one life totally devoted to God is more value to him than 100 lives which have been simply awakened by his spirit. This life devoted to God must be accompanied by the deep confidence that our prayer is effective. In his prayer lessons, our blessed Lord insisted on faith in the Father as a God who most certainly does what we ask. Ask and ye shall receive. To count confidently on an answer is the beginning and the end of his teaching. As we gain the assurance that our prayers are effective and that God does what we ask, we dare not neglect the use of this wonderful power. Our souls should turn wholly to God, and our lives should become prayer. The Lord needs and takes time because we and everyone around us are creatures of time, subject to the law of growth. But know that not one single prayer of faith can possibly be lost, and that sometimes there is a necessity for accumulating prayer. Know that persevering prayer pleases God. Don't limit such free and sure promises of the living God with your reasoning any longer. Don't rob them of their power and ourselves of the wonderful confidence they are meant to inspire. The hindrance is not in God, not in His secret will, and not in the limitations of His promises. It is in us. We are not what we should be to obtain the promise. Open your whole heart to God's words of promise in all their simplicity and truth. They will search us and humble us. They will lift us up and make us glad and strong. To the faith that knows it gets what it asks for, prayer is not a work or a burden, but a joy and a triumph. It becomes a necessity and a second nature. Hold me close till I 